Welcome Vest to the CUI Weekly. I'm Amy Leader and this is what's been happening around CU lately. The women's volleyball team saw some success on the road this past week. The Buffs lost 0-3 against the University of Oregon in Eugene Friday evening, but had a 3-0 win against Oregon State on Sunday, giving the team their first Pac-12 conference road win. Senior Kara Schroeder and sophomore Alexis Austin, both outside hitters, had 12 kills each, leading, the te- leading to the team's victory. The Buffs are now 12-6 and six overall, 4-4 four and four in the Pac-12. Next weekend, they will face the University of Arizona and Arizona State at home. On Friday, the women's soccer tied Cal Berkeley 1-1 in double overtime. In the 67th minute, sophomore Madison Crazier scored the Buffs' goal, but the Bears managed to get a successful shot in with only 42 seconds remaining. CU moves to a record of 3, 2, and 1 in the Pac-12 conference. The girls are set to face the University of Southern California at home this weekend. All CU teams will be wearing pink in their matches this week to raise awareness and show their support for the fight against breast cancer. This past Saturday, the bus defeated Charleston Southern with a 43-10 win, making the team 3-3 for the season thus far. Standout of the game was true freshman running back Michael Adkins. Adkins, who was not actively recruited, but had prior ties with new head coach Mike McIntyre, ran for 137 yards on 13 carries with four touchdowns. The team has now set its goal towards defeating the University of Arizona Wildcats this weekend at the homecoming game. Saturday's game is also the blackout game and kickoff is set for 8 p.m. This week is homecoming week. Be sure to grab a seat on the hill on Saturday at 10 a.m. to enjoy the annual homecoming parade that will begin at the sink and finish at the UMC. For more events and activity schedules, go online to alumni.colorado.edu. On Monday, students gathered around the UMC Fountain protesting the federal recognition of Columbus Day. Protesters consisted of various multicultural and politically active student groups that prefer to remain anonymous. The collection of students were all black and handed out flyers letting the public know of the crimes they say Christopher Columbus committed. Protest trends continued into the week. On Wednesday, students led an unpermitted protest against the university's fossil fuel investments. Three groups of students spread out in the UMC cafeteria area where they jumped onto the tables and delivered a scripted speech insisting CU cut back on its fossil fuel usage. The student activists were not issued any written citations, but UMC security and CUPD expressed concern during the rally. The student-run activist group, CU Divest, plans to meet at the UMC in room 237 at 2 p.m. to discuss further action regarding environmental awareness on campus. The Interfraternity Council decided to expel Sigma Pi after two years of rule violations and a hearing from the Council's Judicial Board. The most recent violation involved supplying alcohol to recruits during this year's rush week. The dismissed fraternity cannot reapply for IFC membership until fall of 2018. Engineering days took place this week. The three-day celebration aimed to attract more students to engineering groups and societies on campus. Reporter Leo Wolfson and Sarah Safari catch up with some of the students at the event. I didn't really have much of a perception about it before, but I mean, engineers seem like pretty like fun people now. They do like sandwiches and see most of it. It's probably going to be about seven or eight inches long. Just a standard nose cone. It's more squarish fins rather than triangular. Probably about an inch long. I think it's just important for girls to everyone to get out and have fun and do what they enjoy. So if you enjoy getting out and doing this, then I think that helps. This Wednesday, CU Student Government will host the Fall 2013 Candidate Debates in the VAC Auditorium from 7 to 9 p.m. CUSG members and running candidates will be permitted the chance to speak out about their concerns, answer questions, and provide students with their proposals for how they plan to serve the CU student body. The debate is open to all students and free food will be provided. This has been the CI Weekly. I'm Amy Leader. Thank you for watching. Have a good week, Bess.